you guys know the lathe was installed yes or it was dropped off yesterday uh, you guys know I don't have any power so I got me a generator this thing is gonna get me enough power for that machine until the power company does my three-phase this thing runs on diesel and from what I hear it can eat up about I think they said maximum well okay there's really no maximum I guess but they said at max load it's about eight gallons an hour <laughs> so it's a lot of diesel having said that I have a 500 gallon diesel tank I know it says gasoline on there but it's a diesel you see right there the clear that's diesel tank so that's why I'm putting the uh, generator right here I'm probably gonna move it a little closer but that way it's here I'm gonna run the cables to the lathe and uh, I have diesel right there so I'm gonna call right now and I'm gonna have the diesel tank filled up and uh, anyway it's all gonna be here a lot of this needs to go we got some cleanup to do and you know I have my dumpster right there I have another dumpster over there so I got three dumpsters here so I'm gonna start moving some of that stuff and just throwing it in dumpsters some of this stuff just needs to go but anyway we gotta clear some of this room just I might just move the generator over a little bit I might just yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move it over so the door, I'm not in the way of the door, but. Anyway, let me show you what's going on in here with this lathe because like I said, the riggers dropped it off yesterday and now DMG Mori sent Mike. What are you doing, Mike? Taking off shipping brackets. So the lathe comes with shipping brackets and you know, stuff that's made or the purpose is to stabilize the lathe during transit. And Mike's putting everything in that box. He told me, whatever you do, do not lose this box, because if you ever need to move this machine, you're gonna need all those brackets back on the machine. So that box, I'm gonna find somewhere to put that box, but. So anyway, Mike is gonna get everything. You're gonna peel off all the plastic, everything. Of course, that's why I needed to have power today, because Mike is gonna run that machine. You know, he needs to do a lot of testing, so. We have power now. I'm gonna try to stay out of, Mike's way as much as possible. But it's gonna be hard. I wanna to touch this thing. I wanna to touch it, I wanna play with it. Oh, we've got some, what's this back here, Mike? What's that? It looks like a pump. Oh, is that like a jack to, to lift the lift the lathe? What is this thing? Yeah, that's that's my port of power to level, help, help me level the machine. Ah, okay. So he's gonna make sure this thing is perfectly level. Uh, okay, Mike, I don't wanna to take too much of your time, but I have a question. Sure. How, how level do you get it? I mean, I know you're looking for perfect, but within within like four microns. Four mi four microns. Microns. How do you measure that? With an indicator and a level. Oh man, this is a, oh, I gotta see this. <laughs> now, at what point is it out of tolerance, Mike? Um, you'll know. Oh no. Huh? When you're you'll know when you're cutting. That it, if it's not going to the spot that it should be going to, uh -huh. cutting your tolerances, mm -hmm. then it needs to be checked. Okay, so so if yes, sir, I do, uh, and I have a two foot beam sitting right there, right there, right where this plate is. Yes. It's a it's a beam that's two feet deep, and I have another one right here. So it's pretty strong. That's awesome. So anyway, uh, you heard him. I will know it <laughs> if it's out of tolerance. Uh, I hope it never is. How, how, that's a parts catcher, right? These right here are, this is your parts catcher down here. Oh, down there. It's on this bar. Here. What is this? These are your foot pedals for your ah. rear, rear spindle and front. Spindle. Got it. Okay, Mike, I'll get out of your way. I'm gonna set up a time lapse over here and we're just gonna see you work from afar. How about that? <laughs> All right, guys, we'll be back. All right, so I'm back at the lathe right now. Mike is taking a little break right now, so I'm gonna, I didn't want to be in his way, so I just kind of taking a, taking a peek in here, and I noticed he has a plate right here. And I asked him what that plate was for. He says, well, that's where I level the machine. He bolts that plate here, then he levels the machine in every direction with that plate. Because I was wondering how they're gonna level this thing, because 
you know, it's at a slant. Everything, nothing's flat on here. So that's, <laughs> that's where they do it right there. Live and learn, right? All right, so the, um, I'm gonna have to hook up the lathe myself to the uh, generator, but I need some lugs because the cables that they gave me with the generator are just huge. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to go get some lugs to plug it, uh, to you know, hook it all up. And uh, I also need an air compressor. That <clears throat> the little pancake compressor, it's not enough air. So, uh, and I need one like now. So I'm probably gonna have to go to Track Supply or Home Depot or something and just go get whatever they have. I guess um, that's just gonna have to, do, you know, that's just gonna have to work for now. Later on, we may have to upgrade, but. Uh, running out of time all of a sudden <laughs> all right uh let me go get some uh let me go to the uh, electrical supply house and i will be back check it out mike got some lugs man awesome. that's gonna allow me to fix it all up mike's not as excited as i am <laughs> how you doing man i'm eric who are you you're with tungaloy all right we're gonna talk tools so doesn't matter how big a machine or how nice a machine i have doesn't matter how much power i have we don't have tools, we're not gonna cut anything, right? That is correct. So, that's what I'm gonna talk to, what's your name, Mike? Scott. Scott, that's Mike, that's Mike over there. All right, so we're gonna talk tools, we'll be right back. All right, so while Scott and I were talking about tools, Mark with uh, AJ, Rod. AJ Rod showed up and he brought me a lot of goodies. These are my Royal Chucks, Royal Collets, and uh, what else we got, Mark? Uh, all the WTO live tooling. All the live tooling. It's all here. So now we're gonna get in there and see what we got. I hope I hope there's some tools in there. <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna break into here and see what we got in here. All right, so this is the first chuck. Is this the main spindle or sub spindle? Mark. It's a lot of boxes. Some of these are heavy. <laughs> What's in here? This is a small box. Oh, this is that uh, collet changing tool. So the collets that we're getting, they're quick change. And you stick this in the collet, you pull, you remove it. And this is how you install the next collet. Super simple. Cool. I think this is the other collet. Call it Chuck. Yep. Oh, this is the main. This one's bigger. Oh, I'm not even gonna try to pick that up with one hand. So this is the sub spindle Chuck, and that's the main spindle. Yep, there it is. So these collet chucks will take up to a three inch bar, actually slightly more than three inch. Look at the through ball on through bore on that thing. And we will go over the <laughs> the benefits of collet chucks and why I went with collet chucks on the next video. How about the next one? Next video we're gonna install all the tools on that machine. Ended up not unboxing any of this they uh, all they did is go through all the boxes and just check the numbers and uh, check them off the list so according to the list everything is here so I'm gonna have to unbox all these on a separate episode because like I said we're gonna put them all in that lathe so when we do that's uh, when I'm gonna do it we have the lathe hooked up I still gotta hook up the ground tomorrow that's the one that we didn't hook up, but all the, the three legs for the three face are hooked up. Uh, look at the size of these cables. These things are, <laughs> they're huge. Uh, I had to go and buy a compressor. I was trying to get something different, but this is what, you know, got to the point where I just had to get a compressor. So I just went to Trek Supply and I bought this 
Ingersoll Rand compressor. I think it'll be plenty for now. Uh, you know, we're gonna put it in the corner for now, hook it up to the machine and just get the machine running. Uh, like I said, uh, I don't have power yet, so I have to get this uh, generator. But uh, yeah, just making it happen. Uh, like I said, uh, they're gonna come back tomorrow, keep working on the machine. I think it's all level already. Uh, so that's that, but uh, anyway, tomorrow uh, I'm gonna unload that compressor tomorrow morning. And like I said, I'm gonna put it right there in the corner, just run a hose. The hose hooks up right here. And uh, of course we got power and then they can keep on setting up the machine because they're to the point that they need power and they need air. So that's where I'm at. <laughs> If you guys see, it's already dark outside. I've been at it all day and uh, uh, I still got quite a bit to do. Anyway, more brakes showed up uh, from the machine shop. So we're gonna get those ready and uh, gonna get them ready to ship. So they're coming in, they're coming in. And once this thing is up and running, they're really gonna come in. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I would say keep them centered, but we're not doing much of that right now. At least I'm not. I'm, I'm busy with this, but I'll get back to it very soon. I promise. Alrighty. Thank you.